Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mark's RC. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think of the new logo. That was something that uh, came up with over the weekend. Uh, I was chatting with uh, a subscriber, friend, YouTube, uh, acquaintance, basically, from Australia. And uh, it's a man you should uh, watermark your videos. And so that basically turned into uh, watermark, logo, uh, just a couple of other things. And so, um, yeah. Let me know what your thoughts are. So, uh, D90 SCX24 right here, obviously making its way down um, some rocky terrain here. Not exactly the most difficult stuff. But I definitely uh, kind of do a number here. Wish I wouldn't have gone that route right there. Kind of wanted to go way, way, way more to driver's right. Lookers left. I try to back up. It gets a little spastic here for a second. Yep. And from this point forward, it seems to be all right. But taking you on a journey down to this spot that I've been going to for the last couple of weeks. Uh, really cool location. It's got some really just, just awesome rock. Um, stuff, stuff is just super sticky. Old granite, basically. As you can see, there's a black set of wheels and tires on this now. I spray painted the silver uh, stamp steel beadlocks and, and traded out uh, silver lugs for hardware on them. And I think it kind of gave this thing a little bit nicer look. And also put wider foams into the tires. I think that really kind of helped sort of make them look a little beefier. But once it gets to the top here, then I kind of pan around to the right. You can sort of see a little bit where, a little bit more about this place. It's kind of like an old mining crossroads slash logging crossroads. I think they used to probably take vehicles or wagons across here. And then once this pans to the right, there's a, you don't see it in the video, but there is a cut that kind of goes where that gravel sort of builds up and stays to the right side of that tree in the, in the background. So I had the panda here last week and uh, I was dying to just bring this thing back. I have given it uh, a clear coat. So I took the gloss basically away by giving it a clear coat. Really set those decals in there for forever now. And then uh, did a bunch of work on the wheels and tires. And then also, too, I guess now is probably a good time uh, to talk about the spring modification that I did on this thing. Uh, once upon a time ago, like a few months ago, I think it was, I bought a set of those uh, telescoping uh, shocks. Injura makes them. Uh, they're green, lime green or something like that. I bought them for my rock rig. And... Um, it came with three different sets of shocks, and so I put the softest ones on, on that rock rig and just uh, kept the medium ones aside for something else and had never even really considered using them gold because they were just incredibly stiff and just thought they would never be of any use at all. So anyway, that's the thing that I ended up reaching for. Um, I wanted to lower the ride height on this because I thought it looked a little, a little too goofy sitting up so high, um, but I also wanted it to not bottom out and have good rebound at like at peak flex and stuff like that so it didn't you know get locked in to you know whatever position it was at so you can really see it work right there um what i did was i took the gold coils which are the stiffest ones out of that kit that you get three coils in three different sets in i took those and i cut them pretty much almost clean in half um and used just a half coil all the way around and uh have adjusted like the preload ring down to where uh, it pretty much keeps it from you know as it's sitting still um, there's just a little bit of travel before the shock reaches its maximum but it takes a fair amount of pressure to actually get it to reach that point um, 
And so what it's done was given it, you know, all of that droop that it needs, you know, whenever it needs to articulate and so on and so forth. But then when it comes to that point of, you know, getting stuffed up into the wheel well, it it saves it from bottoming out. You know, it's kind of like a bump coil, basically, um, something you'd run inside of like an internal coil shock. But since these are external coils and you don't want to go taking up any travel space inside of the tiny little barrel inside of there, this, I think, is kind of like what you sort of end up having to do is kind of quote unquote bump coil, but doing it on the coil over on the outside with a stiffer coil, just less of it. So it seems to have worked. Um, obviously, this thing doesn't um, doesn't really bind at all in the back end and only binds uh, in the front, like at the most extreme turn and you know, like the, the tire barely rubbed the bumper. And I've, I've filed it down and trimmed it a bunch, but and the wheel wells have been trimmed on this as well too so the thing's all set as far as that goes it has no issues there um and it's just an amazing little crawler i've had this thing for a couple of years now it used to be the c10 in its many various forms and it i decided to build it back up as the d90 um and the d90 body used to sit on a jeep rubicon body that or a jeep rubicon that i had set up quite a while ago but Kind of gave up on on the stock uh, SCRX24 bodies and decided to go with the customs that I had, that had come up with. So anyway, this whole section right through here, uh, I thought was just awesome. And this was filmed before the section I did coming down. So if that makes any sense, yeah, it should, obviously. Um, this was done beforehand, and I was like, well, you know what? In order to kind of make this a little bit more complete, I should probably film coming down since I made it up so easily. Why not, why not come down? Um, and actually coming down was a little bit more of a tricky, you know, kind of situation. You saw like right in the front of the video where I slammed the front diff right into the rock. Um, I probably should have made like one or two more backups and come across the top of that a little bit more. Um, kind of followed the same path that I took coming up. So, but needless to say, like this coming around here, these tires, um, this tiny little point of a rock right here, that thing, it just found a tread and just held right on all the way up, you know that's great i couldn't ask for any better traction in a situation like that so kind of hyperspeed through this which i was incredibly surprised that the scx24 just just motored right through all of that with no problem and then kind of back to normal bit speed things looking pretty good I, I really am happy with how this thing is is looking now you can go ahead and ask me if this is going to get an interior um it's the SEX24 chassis with an RC four-wheel drive body sitting on the top. Yes, I do have an interior for it. No, there is not enough room to do a complete interior. The battery is sitting right where uh, the driver and passenger seat would be or are. And so, uh, you know, in order to shift things around and get stuff moved and stuff like that, it's really... I don't know. It would take a lot of likes on this video and a lot of comments uh, encouraging me to invest the time and energy to get an interior stuffed inside of this thing. Um, I don't know if I really got it in me to get it done because I've looked at it multiple different times and I still can't quite come up with the way that I would be able to pull it off. Um, or else, honestly, I think it, have, it, would be, it would be done by now. Let's put it that way. Um, and I, I really have looked at it quite a bit. I thought about like doing a half interior that's something that's also a possibility. Again, leave me a comment, think your thoughts on the whole half interior thing. Pretty much meaning I can throw like a dash, uh, like a pseudo floor, and at least give like, you know, shoulders, might be able to see hands or something like that of a driver. But um, yeah, anyway, I thought this little spot was gonna challenge this thing and it just said, nah, whatever, man, you know? Give me something that really, it like slips like maybe an eighth of a turn of the wheels right there and then it just pulls itself right up. <laughs> Nothing really seems to challenge this and there's more footage coming up that I was just completely just, I had just a, such a fun day with this thing. Uh, I brought three callers with me and each one of them just had their time to shine and, and shine they did. So thanks so much for watching. Um, please hit that like and subscribe button and hopefully you liked the video. Leave any thoughts, comments, concerns, questions, anything like that you may have in the comments there. And we will see you on the next one. Thanks so much again.